Welcome to Ask GMBN Tech, where you get to ask us. Okay, I'm flying solo today, but us, as in all the people, all the brilliant brains here at GMBN and GMBN Tech and EMBN, um, you get to ask your questions to us. So use the hashtag AskGMBN Tech on any of the comments, uh, and we'll hopefully answer your question soon. Okay, great question here from Will Weatherburn. Uh, and he's asking, he's getting a downhill bike this summer. He's gonna travel to the Alps in a van. Sounds great. He's got a sleep set up in his van and he wants to store his bikes underneath, but the boxer is quite tall. Can he just deflate the fork um, to fit into the storage? Well, I mean, short answer is yes, you can. I mean, we're assuming that your boxer is an air version. You're saying deflate, so that flags. And 2017 was when boxer rock shots rather phased out the coil boxer i mean you might have had a coil conversion on it um but assuming it's an air version you can yeah just let the air out obviously make a note of what pressure you're running and it should be all good i mean if you're going to the alps and you've got time to start buying stuff it doesn't sound like it's your first rodeo it doesn't sound like it's your first trip to the alps but don't forget to take more spares dh casing tires are a must definitely um maybe bigger rotors get lots of spare pads, maybe some spare sort of grips and other items that you, if you crash, you might wreck. Purely because when you're buying stuff out there, if you're in a mountain resort, stuff can get very expensive very quickly. Whereas when you've got time to buy, buy in advance, you can find the little bargains that you need. But yeah, let us know how the Alps trips goes. It sounds awesome. Great question here from Hatchet308. Uh, they say, why has it taken so long for the industry to realize that cranks should fit the insane? Okay. Little bit to unpack first, but I mean, takeaway point is yes, it has taken a while for the industry to realize that not everybody needs long cranks. So traditionally cranks have been sort of 170 as your shorter crank up to maybe a 180 in mountain bike. And for lots of people with short legs, be they women or men, that's less than ideal. Why? Well, where your hip is and where your knee is and where your foot is will change depending on leg length and how you impact the crank and how fast you can pedal will all be impacted by your crank length. So there's a lot going on and we're gonna sort of skim over a lot of it, but there's probably a deeper dive in there. I think Anna's done a great video on shorter cranks already. So why is it important and why is crank length now more of a topic? Well, I guess first off, probably because now bottom brackets have gotten a lot lower and shorter cranks help provide lots of clearance. So that's probably the reason why we've all started to look at shorter cranks. The fit issues of running a shorter crank for those with shorter legs, be, be women or men, has been known for quite a while. For mountain bikes and for sort of more modern mountain biking, we've got to look at Georgina Terry of Terry's Bikes. She did loads of work on making bikes work ergonomically for lots of people, be those smaller people and for women specifically. So I think that sort of, that change has started to grow and more and more bikes are starting to come back to it. Another reason why it's taken a long time is, well, brands like manufacturers like the Shimano's, the SRAM's, the Suntour have made longer cranks for a long time and done really well at selling them because bike brands would buy them and bike brands would spec them. So it's a bit of a chicken egg, and egg thing where bike brands will want shorter cranks and they'll slowly get produced and slowly will get the change, but it takes a long time for cranks to change because they're being specced on bikes so many years in advance. Um, another factor for some bike brands is whereby they'll run the same length crank on a couple of different sizes because it means they don't have to buy four different crank lengths, they can just get two and it'll make do. So looping back to your question, yes the industry has started to take notice and for smaller riders and, and women, change is coming and shorter bike, shorter cranks are coming. So Yes, change is there, it's just taking a while. Great question here uh, from 5133. I'm not gonna try and butcher your name, so I apologize in advance. Um, the question here is he's got a four-year-old RockShox Deluxe RT that's suddenly leaking air for some reason. Um, it's dropped around 100 PSI after riding an hour. Yeah, that is sort of not great. Um, the lockout isn't working anymore. I don't have the tools or knowledge uh, to serve as on my own. That's okay, good admission. Some people try when they don't know. Um, I don't know whether a simple seal renewal would fix the problem. Um, so is it worth it getting it fixed or looking for new and better rock shocks on eBay? Um, this is a really fun question. And I would say 
maybe is the key key take home. So air loss means that probably the seals need replacing, um, and that could be it could be just as simple as new like an air can service effectively. So that's seals inside, fresh oil inside, which we say is simple. It is something you probably want to send away to do, uh, especially if you've not got the experience to do it yourself. Um, I mean, if the shock fits and it works really well, pre-air loss, I'm gonna say it's worth getting serviced because it, that cost, uh, in the UK, that's around 120 euros, depending on where you go and what, what your shock is. Um, that's still sort of half the price of buying a new one. And even if you're buying it secondhand, where the price is gonna come down, even if you get a secondhand one, that also might need servicing. And the biggie is it might not fit in terms of the shock hardware. So that's the literally the mounting bolts and bushings and those that assembly. But also it might not be the right tune. So lots of shocks have got a predefined uh, damper tune. And often you'll have little symbols to show how high that uh, sort of damping load is on the shock um, and if you get one that's incorrect for your bike it can make your bike ride well really crap um, so yeah there are servicing videos out there that we've done here and it's not as complex as you might think but if you've not serviced it in four years i mean huge respect to you you really treat your bike really well so that's great um, i've seen riders who's destroyed shocks in well in four months. Um, I'm not going to name the presenter, but some of them can be brutal. And servicing shocks and forks does get expensive, um, but it is worth it. It makes them last longer because you're not wearing out stuff that is expensive to replace, whereas the seal kits, the oil, and, and that process is relatively cheap. Um, so yeah, get it serviced and enjoy your bike. Next question here from Nick Scott 7953. Um, he's got a vertical bike rack and when driving the front wheel spins, he's had multiple people stop him and say it's ruining his bearings. Is this true? This is a great question. And well, it's got me thinking. I mean, effectively like riding and, and, and general wear it is wearing parts out. Even if you've got the grease in there, over time, the sort of ball bearings and the bearings in your wheel will wear out. So effectively, if your bike wheel is spinning really fast and it's spinning all the time, and if you're driving a lot, effectively it is creating somewhere. Is it ruining it? Well, that, that's a harder question to answer directly. I think if you're on the autobahn uh, or you're driving really fast highway speed, sort of over 100 miles an hour or 180 k's an hour, then yeah, the, the speed of that wheel is gonna be really fast, potentially too fast for the, the grease to do its job of protecting and creating a slide layer between all the bits that are moving in your wheel. Um, so is it is that bad? I mean, is the aerodynamic load that high? It could be. Um, I guess looping back, it's probably not ruining your bearings. No worse than kind of really hardcore jet washing, which some people do. But I mean, I guess the quick fix is just to put a Velcro strap on it and that should eliminate the, the spinningness. So try that. Super question here that definitely got my gray matter thinking. Um, the question is, uh, I have a regular 18 tooth ratchet on my DT Swiss hub and I'm thinking of upgrading. Will the 36 or 54 tooth options damage my rear suspension performance? Okay, this is in reference to the ratchets in a DT Swiss hub, whereby if you get more teeth in there, it means the points of engagement are higher so there's less sort of free play in the hub system. Um, so the short answer is, well, actually, maybe. The bigger bigger one is that it really depends on the kinematics of your suspension. I mean, that's the fancy nerd speak for covering a heap of different things that your bike suspension does, which as it moves through its travel, and some of it is gonna provide uh, pedal feedback or pedal kickback. And whether you feel the difference with multiple ratchets, more chain growth, it's, it's all gonna kind of depend on what su suspension system you've got. Um, why does that matter? Well, as the swing arm rotates, um, it pivots, and it's gonna sort of pivot, depending on where those extra pivots are, whether it's just a single pivot, whether it's a multi-pivot, whether it's a four bar. Anna's done a great video on all the different systems out there. But effectively, from your bottom bracket to where your drive is, if that changes, and how it changes, so if the arc is really kind of looping round, and shortening the chain stay, or it's lengthening it, it's gonna change the chain growth. And you'll feel that as pedal kickback through the pedals. So yeah, depending on, on your bike's kinematics, 
If you've got lots of chain growth, then yeah, upping the points of engagement, you could feel it a lot more. And I say could, if you've only got 130 mil of travel, realistically, there's probably not gonna be that much. So you feel a little bit, but not that much. If you'd got a much, much longer travel bike, like a downhill bike, for example, or some of the enduro bikes where they're 180, 190 of travel, then I feel like there's a lot more space to find that kickback. One thing I should actually flag is that chain growth and, and this sort of pedal kickback I'm saying isn't, isn't a bad thing at all. It's actually a tool that suspension designers use to help your bike under pedaling loads. So it can actually, well, it's a huge topic that, that's really hard to get into. But back to the, your question, um, I feel that a 130 bike is gonna be fine. There's not gonna be lots of chain growth um, as there's not that much travel. And most modern bikes, actually the faster engagement would be quite nice. So you know what? It shouldn't affect it too much. It could, but just go for it. Engaging question here from Paul. He's got an older DT Swiss EXM dual position fork. Um, he used to get it serviced for his local bike shop. They did some in-house servicing and they also sent it off to DT Swiss HQ. Um, but now DT Swiss are saying that, well, they don't service that old anymore. It's 15 years old. Um, so is it the end of the fork already? He's seen younger forks on our bike vault. Um, okay, so no short answers, unfortunately. Uh, so yes, some of the bikes that you'll see in the bike vault will have newly serviced old forks. And that's because some brands, RockShox, Manitou, uh, made loads and loads and loads of forks. So that means they've got loads of service kits still available. We do do our homework and we phoned the UK main service center for DT Swiss, uh, which is TF Tuned. And they, yeah, they confirmed that service parts for those forks weren't in ready supply when that fork first came out. And now 15 years later, they're really hard to find. Um, so yeah, options time. Unfortunately, it's trickier, especially when you're trying to source a 26 inch fork. So uh, the first thing, and actually a suggestion from TF Tune is hunt for older forks of the same model. Hopefully you'll be able to find a couple, maybe up to four, where you'll be able to pull them all together, or TF Tune can, and create one fork that works. That's one option. You could search for new old stock from other brands, maybe Fox or RockShox, where we know you've got more chance of getting those service kits, purely because they made loads more of those forks. Um, and then yeah, shopping around for a brand new fork is probably the, the best other option. RockShox does a reburn a 26 inch, only drawback is it does have a tapered steer. So it might be time for a new bike, which is, you know, it's sad times and I feel like Moving forward, we'll have a lot more of this. We've had lots of standard changes, whether it be wheel or headset or forks or suspension. But I think it's that thing of itemizing all that joy that the bike has given you over the last 15 years, it's worth it. So just maybe it's new bike time, but get in touch, let us know how you go. Hopefully that's helped. If you've got your questions, don't forget to use the hashtag AskGMBN Tech where we'll be able to answer your questions. Get writing now.